Well, hey guys, thanks for coming to the webinar. Can you guys just type uh, one in the messages if, if you can hear me? Let me just make sure you guys can hear me. Everything looks good. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome, cool. Well, I'm Mike Halbin from Jewelry Ecom. Um, the title of the session is Sharpening Your Diamond Sales A-Game with the Web and Digital Technology. And I am so happy to have Asaf here from GN Diamond, one of my favorite people in the whole industry. So um, we're gonna do a two-part presentation today. Basically, uh, Asaf is gonna go over some tools and some ways that jewelers can empower their diamond sales game in their stores. And then I'm gonna take over after his part and go over some marketing concepts for you guys. So between the two of them, it should uh, give you some firepower for those diamond sales. So Asaf, some I'll, let you, I'll let you start. Bring some value, right? That's yep. that's what it's all about. So first things first, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Howard. Uh, love Jewelry Ecom. I, I read it, I, it brings me value. I love to learn from other experts that are out there in uh, collaboration, right? We're stronger together than we are alone. So first things first, love this guy also. I think he's super talented, just a little bit. I mean, Mike has done work for GN. He's created websites for us. And I've learned a lot, you know, from his knowledge on social media and his expertise. So I, I definitely encourage you guys to reach out to him. I think if you're a vendor or a retailer, there's a lot that he can bring to the table. So a little bit about just why am I on this thing? You know, we're, we love helping retailers. We love the industry being stronger than what it was last year. And uh, we're seeing so much robust growth you know, in the middle of a pandemic, which is unbelievable. So, you know, just to let the people know on there um, who we are, we talk to 3,500 independent retailers and we focus on sales reps and managers and owners. And we, we know how to listen. So one of the things that you will see on there that we're gonna talk about real viable solutions into increasing foot traffic, into making shorter presentations and closing more deals. And that's what it's all about. And increasing, of course, the referrals, which is, that's the majority of what we're seeing out there. Why we think this is such a great time and me and Mike wanted to do this webinar was, look, discounters are popping up everywhere, all over the United States. And also we know from industry's news that it's not a bad thing, but Blue Nile is opening up, uh, you know, brick and mortar stores along with their e-commerce websites. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about, um, things that can help you make more sales and, and a point of distinction. And some of it, uh, Blue Nile's already using. So for example, what I'm doing right now is I have an iPhone, but you can have a Samsung phone. I am actually want to text over Mike. Imagine yeah. if he was on, on your side of the counter in the jewelry store, or if he was at home, a lot of us are, I'm going to come in on Tuesday. Here's what I'm looking for. I'd like to make uh, you know an appointment to, to see diamonds. So imagine if I can engage with Mike as a potential client. And what I've done right now, guys, is I scanned a regular diamond with a QR code and I'm pulling up here, Mike, let me send it over to you. So you and I can be on the same page and we're actually looking at a diamond together. So this is great for the pandemic when we have masks on our face, but one day this thing will be over. So our jewelers have been using this before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and they will be using it afterwards. Mike, did you get that text? Yeah, I just got the text now. I'm opening it up. Awesome. Yeah, it's so right here. Basically what this is, and take a look at it, he's looping this diamond. So we have two things here. And I wanted to start off right off the back because I believe in bringing added value. What he's showing you is he's actually looping the diamond with his phone. And Mike, you're in New York, right? Yeah. I'm in Philadelphia. So imagine if inside of the store within seconds, we can actually loop a diamond and show the characteristics if we, if we choose to. If we don't choose to show that part, we want a point of distinction if they're shopping you, you're actually able to show a brilliancy score. And what does that mean? We're able to prove through science through a third party why one SI2 is better than the other which I think is super cool. And I'll tell you what, we're seeing unbelievable results. So what I mean by that, you can text it, you can email it. And the most important thing is, what did I just do, Mike? 
I captured you your personal their, phone. Uh, their phone number. Yeah. I captured your cell phone number or an email. So if, I, if I'm not able to close the sale right there and then on the first try, I'm able to actually follow up on it, which is super special. Now, we both know that a seamless presentation, added value, a presentation taken to another level, right? That's what this presentation is about, the A game. You never want to leave the customer's eyes. You want to engage them. You want to ask uh, certain questions are important to them. And you want to be able to be in front of them and basically give them that wow experience. We know that only 20% of the time, somebody wants to see the, the GIA certification right there then or AGS. But ultimately, we're able to have that right on our fingertips without leaving the customer's eyes. So what I want to do next is show you what we've built for our jewelers. And let me share my screen. Mike, you able to see this? Uh, yes, now I can, yep. Awesome. So let's talk about the flow when somebody comes into a jewelry store. Most likely they've gone online, nine, nine out of 10 people have gone online and you know they're confused. They went on the same brand, let's just call it James Allen or Blue Nile or, or other people's websites and they're seeing the same color and clarity and there is such a big gap difference. One could be on the same brand, 7,000 and the other one could be 3,000. Why is that? So ultimately, when you can show with visual and verbal communication why one diamond outshines one another, you're able to build credibility so much faster and close more deals. So what I'm showing you right now will simplify the sale. And what we're seeing is it's cutting the sale presentation into half. So this is what they're seeing on, on the difference page. We saw prices. On this page, what we're seeing right now is jewelers presenting diamonds in a certain way where the end consumer can relate to understand that there's the same color, HSI2, 133, 134, but one's shinier than the other, one's brighter than the other, which I, I, I love that. What we're showing right now is what most of you guys present when you're inside of your store, the four C's, right? People come in, they want a professional to educate them on why one diamond, uh, one color, what does this color look like? What does this one clarity look like? So when you can show why an H could look more like an F color, but the complete opposite where an F, you think it's a good value, right? It's on paper, it's on blue Nile, it's on the cheapest diamond on there. But why is there such a big gap difference? Because some H's look like J's. What I love about this is now it's a clarity page. So somebody thinks they're getting a great deal right down the street. Most of the jewelry stores that we do business with, there is at least two to 20 jewelers all in the same town, all in the same city. Now, most of the time people come in to see you and they're only gonna buy from you. But we're, let's talk about facts. 50% of the time, somebody's shopping you or asking for a better price, or can you include this? When I believe that when you bring value to the table with technology and simplified tools, you can close more sales quicker and easier Without the negotiations, you'll have an added value. So as you could see, I'm showing you an SI2 that could look like an I1, right? The inclusions could look like an I1, but I've seen the complete opposite. I want to show you why as soft spine jewelers, our SI2s look more like an SI1. Now, the best part about it is we have an added value, right? We have an added value where I was talking a lot about Blue Nile. So Blue Nile, for example, has an Aster cut diamond. Mike, do you know what that is? The shape? No, so Aster cut diamonds, there's 108,000 diamonds on, for example, Blue Nile or James Allen. That's generic diamonds. They have a signature cut that have a brilliancy score. By the way, Kays and Zales also has, has a signature cut called the Leo cut diamond. So we've all heard of the Leo cut and that has a brilliancy score. So what's nice about the diamonds that we feature is something with a brilliancy score. And if it doesn't score very high to an excellent, we actually just do not sell it. So we've seen jewelers use this within their presentation to have that real point of distinction, why one diamond outshines one another. So as you can see over here, this is the diamond journey. So you have everything on one page. You have a diamond with a picture of the diamond. 
an explanation of what I just went through with you, the brilliancy score, and you have the actual score itself. So we're looking at a very good score, which is brighter than 90% of the world's diamonds in this price range. I'm not even talking about color and clarity. If we want to go into it, I can go into it. But usually people have a weight and people usually have a budget in mind. So when you can simplify the sale and take them through with honesty and, this, and transparency, we're seeing technology being used to give that wow experience while simplifying the sale. As you can see, I'm looping the diamond right now. So you could do it on mobile and you could do it also on your iPads. So look how quickly and easily I'm navigating through some of the things that might be important to, jewel, to end consumers. Can I see the inclusion? Well, we know that most people can't use a loop, a jeweler's loop. They're not trained like we are inside of a store. So when you can show them inclusions, like what I'm doing right now, looping the diamond, it's really pretty cool. And then ultimately, I also have one last feature which gives them extra security. So it's a fingerprint technology which gives them insurance discounts. Now, if you wanna know how do I use this tool when I'm inside of the store, you can use as little as much as you want, but what's nice about it, 50% of the time we know that somebody is negotiating. They're asking for a little bit of a better price or they're saying down the street, I can get it for this. Can you match that price? So when you say to them, our diamond comes with a third party science, our diamonds comes with extra security and, and, and we're actually looping it. Did that jeweler show you this particular diamond with all of these extra features and benefits? And the answer is most of the time is no. So I, I love the fact that we're collaborating together. And by the way, how we came up with this is by talking to 3,500 jewelers, uh, independent retailers on, on a daily basis. So you're able to show the four C's and simplify it. And you're able to show something like, I'll show you right now. Something as simple as this picture where it shows similar identical diamonds, but how different they are, right? There's a difference why there, there is really a reason why there's such a variety in prices on jewelers down the street or if, if they're shopping you online. And I love that, you know. Um, I want to go on to another thing that has been extremely helpful with technology, okay? And this is something that we add on to jewelers' websites. So what we're seeing right now, this is a jeweler out of the Chicago area. Um, they're wool jewelers. And what we've done is we've added a mechanism to show diamond studs. And why I love this is 99% of the jewelers out there actually do not have diamond studs on their website. And as you could see, I'm playing around. I'm, I'm, I'm a jeweler. It doesn't matter if I'm big or small. I don't always have all the sizes. So when I can show on a woman's ear what a quarter carat looks like compared to a half carat, compared to a one carat, I'm able to visually and verbally give a different experience. And what's cool about it, we've also added that diamond stud and you're able to see what's available for next day shipping. So again, this is not an advertisement for GN, but we offer these things and we're seeing unbelievable results. So these are real life scenarios on jewelers websites that actually are presenting to end consumers and are able to show why they should buy from them when they're being shopped. So they're using technology, but simplified technology, which is the most important thing here. And same, there's a lot of technology that it's like, you know what, I'm really super successful. I've been doing things one way for a very long time. I don't want to change. But when you can show it them why your, your, your store is better than another store, it makes a really, really great difference. And, and I love that about um, some of the things that, that we've built. Mike, what do you think so far? Love it, man. I love it. So lastly, what I wanted to show is also something that jewelers ask me all the time. Every once in a while, jewelers are slow sometimes. And things slow down. Sometimes business is great. I mean, I, we've seen... What I love about the time that we're seeing, because they, they, they didn't travel as much and they didn't go out to dinner as much, we're starting to see a lot more people travel as, as, um, as we're being vaccinated. But, you know, 
how do we create more sales with simplified technology? So we have an advertising company within, but these are some examples that jewelers have used. So I love this, this cutie over here. Um, let me help you get out of the doghouse. So it, it really sometimes, when you're taking this post and you're putting it on your social media, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, you're able to sometimes create, well, oh my God, my, my anniversary is coming up. So what we're seeing on a daily basis, some of the videos, we're, we're creating videos for jewelers of unique diamonds and diamond studs, but also turkey solutions for marketing that has been extremely helpful when jewelers are slow. And also just keeping up with, you know, look at Target and Macy's, right? They're, they're posting all the time. So ultimately, um, there's some really cute um, advertisement that, as you can see, that we've created uh, for, for the jewelers for free, okay? To increase foot traffic. That's it. What do you think, Mike? It's amazing, man. I think it's, look, one of the things I've always loved about GN is that you guys have, I mean, for those of you who don't know, GN, basically their whole motto, their whole mission is actually that they help independent jewelers uh, sell more diamonds. And it's with technology that they're, they're really harnessed. So it's really cool to see uh, different tools and different things people can use on their websites, but also to, to close in the store. I love it. So I didn't want to throw out too much, but you know, this is the diamond producing associations and what we've done, for example, is being able to show why diamonds are so rare. You know, so many times we talk to a lot of jewelers and they say to me, you know, sometimes somebody asks me, why, why are these diamonds so, so expensive, you know? And I believe that if you use some of the sales tools that I'm showing in the background, like why are they so expensive? They're, one to 3.7 billion years old. Now, number one, it's the oldest thing you're ever going to own. It's the rarest thing you're ever going to hold in your hand. And when you're able to show that and have the point of distinction and give them a life experience, I believe that with 5G being rolled out, we're going to see retail to another level. We might be seeing augmented reality when you're walking into a Nordstrom. So we're not going to do that right away, but when we can show on our iPads, why these little things are so beautiful and so rare and every SI2 and every SI1 is different, you can bring value to the table and you'll be surprised what an end consumer might spend when they had a $5,000 budget when you can show them that life experience. So I'm going to show one last video, Mike, and I'm going to hand it over to you if you don't mind. Okay, sure. It's not, it's not up yet. I don't see, I don't see it if you're playing it. You see it now? Nope. Okay. Hold on one second. We see the, um, why do seemingly identical diamonds have a 70% difference in price? Gotcha. See that okay. Hold on one second. And if not, if it's the video doesn't want to cooperate, you're sharing. What do you see now? Same thing. All right. Um, I'm going to email everybody on this, uh, on this webinar, this video. So, you know, with that said, Mike, I'd love to learn a lot, a couple of the tools that you have for marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, um, let me share my screen and you guys can tell me that, uh, you see it you see here. I'll stop sharing mine. Okay. All right, you guys, how's that? Good? Yeah. You see my screen? Okay, cool. All right, so basically what I wanted to talk about was when I learned that Asaf was going to be talking about uh, tech tools, I thought some marketing insight would, would go hand in hand. So the number one thing I want to talk about really is creating a holistic digital marketing approach. And by working on individual pieces of your marketing um, and not, not unifying them into one system, you're really, uh, you're really slowing down your progress. 
So we're going to go through a few concepts of marketing and, and you'll see what I mean. So first, two biggest things I want you to learn to, to understand when you leave today. One, understanding that higher price items are sold very different than lower price items. Like there's no way around it. And the second thing is that we need to, again, use a holistic marketing approach to reach the buyers. Uh, if you don't, you're just not gonna have enough firepower to really compete with the, the, the Blue Niles and all those guys, okay? So low priced items, very easy to sell to somebody on impulse, right? But as price goes up, the impulsivity goes down. It's just how it is. Obviously, if you have a $100 or $150 piece of jewelry, you throw some social media ads, that's gonna be a lot easier to sell to somebody on a whim than a $3,000 diamond, right? So we have to just always remember that a diamond sale is usually a long, it has a long research period, right? Like the buyer's journey is longer than if they were to just see a $50, you know, ring on, on social media where they could just buy it quickly like that. So the more it costs, the more you have to put into the sale. Okay. This is what I see a lot. I think a lot of jewelers that well, this is not even just diamond sales. This is just online marketing in general, but especially for, for high ticket items like diamonds. I think companies expect that the marketing flow is going to go something like this. I put a social media ad, a uh, hundred people see it. So my conversion ratio is going to be 2%. That's the average, right? And then out of those hundred people that go to my website, two of them are going to purchase from me. And that's a great day. But Anybody who has marketed for a while will tell you, this is just never how marketing works, right? It's not that linear. This is really what it's like, okay? If you expect to get sales, again, not just diamonds, but selling online in general, you have to understand that the buyer's journey is very different. Sometimes they're gonna start with social media ads, go to your website. Sometimes they're gonna start with social media ads go to landing pages. Sometimes the landing pages are going to trigger retargeting. You might have four different retargeting sequences. Some of them are going to set off emails. The emails are going to get sent back. That person is now going to go to the checkout page and maybe do it all over again, right? This is just how marketing is. And if you're selling diamonds, I mean, anything over, like anything over 400, 500 bucks, now that's a, that's a, consideration on the person's finances, right? Like once you're getting over 400, 500 bucks, it's no longer a simple sale. You have to really hit them from all different angles many, many, many times. So to recap, this is not real. This is a myth where someone sees an ad, go to your website, a couple of them check out, and that's the sale. It's, it's just not that simple. Um, by the way, when I made this slide, my daughter, who is seven years old, she said, Daddy, is it really necessary to put a unicorn in your slide? I said, it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> so when we're talking about a high priced sale, this is kind of the formula that I would go by, right? Like, what is their purchase intent? Um, how, which is like, how serious are they about actually buying the product? Brand familiarity, how familiar are they with your brand? And then how much do they actually trust your brand, right? Like those are the three things. And none of them really work independently of each other if you wanna get the sale, right? Like they ha if they're not familiar with your brand, they're never gonna go to your store. If they don't trust your brand, they're never gonna make the purchase anyway. And if they have no purchase intent, you're just wasting your advertising budget on them anyway. So you need these three things and the stronger of each, the, the more successful you're likely gonna be, right? So if we're trying to, to nurture, if we're trying to get these sales and we've already established that the buying cycle is, is longer than, than inexpensive online sales, then we have to, have to, have to nurture customers 
over longer periods of time, right? We can't, if, if they have, a, I don't know, someone's buying an engagement ring and they've been, re, it's a guy who's been researching for six months, eight months, right? So for the past six months, he's been going on Blue Nile, James Allen, looking at every store, every this, and he, he just sees a couple of your social media ads for like three days, he won't even remember you. That guy's not going to remember you. He's been he's been hit by 300 James Allen ads by, you know, within the first week of him going to their website. So you must find a way, you must learn how to nurture customers long-term over time. And the only way to do that is by using multiple marketing channels together in unison with each other. In call to actions, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a whole thing, but I, I guess you really just have to like, if you look at the human, look at the human body, right? It doesn't work unless all the parts are working together, right? Like, yeah, you'll get by, kind of, but if you want to be an athlete and you want to perform at your best, you better make sure you're healthy, you're in, you know, you're in shape and all your pieces of your body are working in unison. And your marketing is completely the same, right? Like you need to stop thinking of each marketing channel as its own independent thing. And that's kind of what I'm gonna go over now. So two categories of marketing. This is kind of how I like to think about marketing in general. We've got outbound marketing and we have inbound marketing. And if you've seen me speak before or you, you read the Jewelry Ecom site, I write religiously on inbound marketing and you're going to see why. Outbound marketing is basically when you are harassing people for the sale. Now in diamond sales, it's a little, it's, it's, you know, you're not going to go door to door. This is just an example of what outbound marketing is. But when I think of outbound marketing, I think of like just randomly calling people on the phone, going door to door, sending out junk emails, right? That's you aggressively like throwing pasta at the wall, hoping that some people will, will, you know, will buy. We call it spray and pray. Spray and pray. Exactly. Then we have inbound marketing, which really to me is what it's all about, right? The main, the main point of inbound marketing is that people are able to find you when they're actually interested in buying, when the time is right. You know, you, basically SEO and Google ads are a way for you to position yourself really intelligently so that people can find you on their own and you don't have to really just hunt and hunt and hunt and hunt. You know, you have a machine that is always sitting there waiting for people to just arrive. In between the two, we have like a hybrid where I feel social media and email marketing are kind of, kind of both, right? Like we have, we have content that we've created, but we also have an outreach where we're blasting it out. So obviously the more inbound you get, the more qualified and the more educated the consumer, right? So Outbound marketing, you're just basically hoping that the right people find it, where inbound marketing, you know the right people are, um, are, are coming to you because if they're actively searching for diamonds and you provide diamonds, you've, you've now found, you've now jump-started your marketing for that customer's journey because you're already getting them when they're close to the sale, right? The inbound marketing tactics always have higher sales conversions. And social media and email marketing, again, go down that pathway too. They're, they're great, but the, the customer and the way that you're reaching a customer is very different. Where with social media and email, you're kind of going out there and inbound your position so that they can find you. And we really need both of these things because I think if you're, I mean, you can't have 50% of the equation, right? Like if you don't have SEO on your website and content on your website and you're not running Google ads, what that really means <laughs> is that what that really means is that you have no way of people to actually find you if they're searching for you already. Like if you don't have the di diamond SEO, you don't have diamond content on your site, you're not running Google ads for diamonds, 
then all of your marketing is therefore outreach. You know, if people are searching for diamonds, you need to have a way for them to actively find you. Okay, so little different strategy between inbound and then also like social media and email, but you need to do both. You need to aggressively go out to market and you also need to be positioned so that you can be found by people that are already searching for you. So not only do you have to use multiple marketing channels to stay in touch with your audience long-term, but it's so, it's so important to understand that, that uh, like each marketing channel relies on the other in some capacity. So if you think of, you know, five cogs, right? And each cog produces a hundred horsepower. So independently, each of those cogs is producing 500, you know, total 500 horsepower, hundred each. But if you put those cogs together, what if you're getting a thousand horsepower or 2000 horsepower or 3000 horsepower? It's because when you, when you bring those marketing channels together to work together, it cranks out way more. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is towards the end of what, what I'm talking about, but I wanna give you some real examples of, of what, I'm, what I'm referring to. So Google Ads, you will be rewarded by the work you put into your website with your Google Ads. So for example, you will get lower ad costs by having a better structured website because Google understands what is on your website and Google can scan the content and it gives you a, it gives you a score about how relevant you are to the searcher. So but like break yes. that down for them, for example, with the fact of on your Google, it, Google realizes that you're a more secured website when you have the right content is basically the words on there, right? Education, yeah. all of those things. Exactly, so exactly. So let's say you, you want to really boost your e-commerce and you have a very, very simple Shopify website with nothing but a few products. Your Google ads are going to cost more because you don't have enough on your website for Google to understand enough about your product. Like Google always wants to match the best search for the user. So Google is going to always rank um, rank websites higher that they feel will provide the searcher with the right information. So therefore, they're also going to give you lower ad costs because they want their users as well to find the most relevant ads. Um, so again, we're talking about if you want to improve your ads, well, we're not just going to work on your ads. We're going to work on your website structure also. So you're never really working on one thing at a time. You're also going to have higher conversion rates with better landing pages. So again, we're using our website to enhance our Google ads. And when I say um, better landing pages, again, the, there are some landing page strategies, the placement of things, what you put on the page, um, et cetera, that are going to either encourage the visitor to buy from you or get them to leave. So a better, well-structured, enticing landing page is going to naturally get you more sales from the ads. So Can I again, add one thing? Can I add yeah, one thing with yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. So for example, what Mike is talking about, if, you're, if you did an ad for wedding bands, right, not for engagement rings, you don't want to have them land on the about us or your front page. You want them to land right on the wedding bands because the less the clicks, the better. You're going to get a better conversion. Exactly. Exactly. So any kind of marketing you do, we're talking about Google ads. It's your website is also part of your Google ads, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it makes a really big difference in your budget and if people are going to actually follow through and buy. Also, um, let's say we want to run a really great social media campaign and we say an, an email, we can use Google ads as the first way to capture some, you know, the top of the funnel, the first, the first interaction you have to be able to remarket to them through social media and email. So like we're seeing these used again, Google ads is not used by itself. We're using Google ads to enhance our social media power and our email marketing power. You know, it's everything is working together as one. 
we look at social media, social media relies on the other things also, right? So first of all, again, your social media, at your ad conversion rate, how many people actually purchase from you from your social media ads is gonna base, be based on your website, right? Like it's gonna be based on the impression they get, the, the trust they get. And if we go back to that formula, your social media ad is absolutely nothing if you don't have great photos and videos and different angles and different tools like Asaf is talking about. Like, it's not just about your social media. Now we're talking about photo, video, and website. So again, it's not just one thing. It's everything, you have to do multiple things and they're gonna empower the other. Again, social media can build your email list. And also, which is not often used or really, you know, people don't really kind of overlook this, is that your social media can help you learn about your audience. So like if you're planning an email marketing campaign or you want to plan a Google ads campaign, you could look at the interactions of your social media posts. You could run full analytics. You can look at your insights and learn like what things do people actually care about that you're promoting? Like what if you, what if you look at your social media and you find that out of the 20 things you post a month, only three of them really resonate with your audience. Can I add one thing? Yeah, yeah. So for example, first time bridal guys, you might show an engagement ring that is pleasing within a price range. You know, when you're going after an upgrade, it could be a four carat emerald cut, right? Is that something like you're talking about? And you can yeah. advertise accordingly within your budget, whatever you can afford to capture those unique people. So for example, if he's talking about social media, where uh, first time bridal, you're going after people on Facebook that are in a relationship. They're not married and they're not single. They're in a relationship. They're more an exact target to what you're looking to do. And vice versa on the upgrades. Only people that are married, not single. I'm exactly. sorry, I just- Oh, no, no, I, <laughs> that's, that's great. That's exactly right. Like you need, to, you, you need to do more with your social media than just uh, post twice a day. You gotta like look at what it's doing and, and adjust and make a real plan, you know? And then we talk about SEO. This is, this is an interesting one for me because a lot, of jeweler, a lot of independent jewelers will say, why do I need SEO? Um, I'm never gonna outrank Blue Nile or James Allen in the search results. And like, I kind of agree. Like, I don't know how you're gonna beat them, you know, on that field, right? Uh, two years ago, I did a, um, I did a report. This is very interesting. So I, I ran an SEO report um, in one of my SEO programs on James Allen, or it was either James Allen or Blue Nile, right? One of the two. And it tells me the worth of their SEO in Google ads. So basically they were earning a um, million dollars a month in, it would have cost them that in Google ads, should they have, if they chose to spend that on Google ad, that traffic uh, on Google ads. But because of their SEO, it's free. They're getting a million dollars in ad value just from their SEO. So like, do I really think you're gonna outrank James Allen SEO? I, I really don't, right? I would use Google ads and social media. However, however, there are some other benefits to doing SEO, for example, your relevance score. So we talked about how if we're running Google ads, we're running social media ads. If your page is well optimized for SEO, you're gonna, your ads are going to reach better people. They're going to reach more people and they're going to cost less per click and less per impression. So there is a, a, a real benefit to formatting your website properly um, to, to please Google, because even if you're not going to outrank James Allen, you're still going to have other benefits um, with the rest of your marketing. Another thing is that if you're writing really good SEO optimized content, um, now you have awesome stuff for your email marketing, right? Like SEO is not just about writing random content. It's about writing relevant content. And you can use SEO tools to research uh, what topics are trending in your area, what topics are trending nationwide, what, and then you can, you can formulate your email marketing around those topics so that you know you're actually putting stuff out there that people wanna, wanna read about and will actually click on. Um, and again, um, 
these, all of your marketing channels really just need to complement each other. And we need to, to stop like only doing social media or, or like only improving our website and wondering one, or like doing social media ads and not improving our photos and wondering why the diamonds aren't selling. Well, because you did the social media part of it, but you didn't follow through on the photography and the video and the content on your website. So you don't neglect any part of your marketing. It's all one unified system. So again, high ticket items, they take a long time to convince someone to buy it. And your marketing really has to, um, it has to, it has to, you have to plan accordingly, right? Like you, it's just not going to be as simple as putting a social media ad out, you know, and one out of every hundred people or two out of every hundred people just clicking and buying, right? It's a system where people will go up and down and forward and back, and then they'll get an email from you and then they'll see you on Instagram. And then maybe they'll go to the website again. And it's, um, you have to follow them all over the web, no matter where they're going. And that's it. But what's so, nice about it, there are tools out there, right, Mike? I mean, you could reach out to somebody like you and you can walk them through how to make it better, right? I yeah. hear a lot of jewelers and they're saying, look, I get overwhelmed. There are so many things. So with me getting pulled and doing so many different things, most of them don't have a marketing director. And even the ones that do, you know, what is the, uh, the budget allowed me to do to get the best return on the investment for the store? And I believe there are little things that you can do to post with a $50 budget if it's exactly to what audience you want. Am I looking to sell fashion? Great. Let's go after a certain disposable income within miles of the store for social media ads to be seen, not just for my friends, because the problem is, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you post something on Facebook, only 2% of your friends are seeing it unless you give Facebook some of your money, right? So you can yeah. post, but if you don't throw a small budget at it, less people are seeing it. So there are tools that you can do within a small budget to get a good return on the investment, a good ROI, right? So agreed, agreed. I mean, there is, I think some, some people will tell you, you need like thousands of dollars a month to make an impact. And that's just, that's just not true at all. I mean, you need a, you need a budget because the game of social media now is you got to pay to play, right? Like you got to run ads. They intentionally limit how many people see your posts without paying them. So you have to have some skin in the game and you have to have some budget, but it does not have to be astronomical. But I love to learn off a hundred dollars. If my ad and my, my brand coinciding with my website is correct, then spend 10,000 and to find out that it wasn't as effective as it should be. Well, yeah, I mean, incremental improvements, right? Like you change one small thing at a time and then you see if it improves and then you can gauge, like you can't change 30 things and then expect to understand which of those things improved your, your sales. I love right? that. So like incremental changes and again, everything works together. Um, I just started working with, with somebody and they're, they've had a hard time selling online. And the first thing we did before we set up the social media ads is I went to their website and I restructured their whole menu because like that website experience um, is a huge major factor for the, for the ads. So it's, um, it's understanding really that you must work even if it's just on a small level, you need little improvements in every area if you're gonna really increase your and, and there are also free tools. So for example, what I was showing you guys earlier, there are things that you can call us up, G and Diamond, and we can actually add on to your website for free. You know, if it's a brilliancy score or if it's a point of distinction or if it's a certification right there in videos, videos on diamonds on websites, tell me if I'm wrong, the ones that do not have it, the ones that do not have diamond studs will get less conversion and less people making an appointment than the ones that do have it. Oh yeah, so video video is king. Video is absolute king right now. So kind of like YouTube, right? YouTube is exploding because of that. Yeah, I mean, why would I why would I bother with, you know, a website with one or two bad photos when I could look at a look at it from a website where it's, you know, crystal clear, spinning around nicely. I could like 
there's just a different experience. And if you're, if you really want to sell and compete with people, like you have to have the tools that your customers want. I've seen the smallest jewelers are able to beat bigger jewelers or chains or, or e-commerce because of the small little incremental changes to their website in their marketing and then coinciding that into the presentation inside of the store on the store level. Because guess what? Blue Nile's opening up jewelry stores, not because e-commerce is going to take over. It's only 9% of diamond sales and 12 to 15%. And maybe it's a little bit lower, but it's right there. Return it because they're not getting what they thought. They want to go into a brick and mortar. But when you can have the online presence with marketing and inside of the store presentations, all uniquely together coinciding, that's the magic happens without overcomplication. We're talking about simplified and easy sales tools to get you bigger, bigger referrals and bigger, more closing percentages. I love it. Well, I'm done. Um, I'm going to open the floor for questions now. Let me stop uh, sharing yes. my screen. All right. Yeah, Harry, we'll send you the slides and stuff for sure, man. Um, any other questions? You guys can just put them in the chat and we will answer them for me or for Asaf. Has to be questions. I don't think so. I think there are zero questions. So Mike, how, how do we get a hold of you if we've wanted some of your services? Yeah, it's uh, it's Mike at HaubenMedia.com. It's H-A-U-B-E-N Media.com. That's my email. So if you guys have any questions for Asaf, what's your email again, Asaf? Asaf at GNDiamond.com. Cool. So you guys can email either one of us for anything you need. And um, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for coming and, and being a part of it.